I'm JC Hill with Alvarado Street Brewery, and here's your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. So one of the first beers that we opened with here at Alvarado Street was a beer called Mai Tai PA. And it was based off a recipe that I developed down in San Diego that utilized a hop called HBC 369, later became named as Mosaic. It was just a very simple beer, a 100% Pilsner base malt with Mosaic, you know, throughout the kettle and dry hop, 100% Mosaic. And it was just a really special beer in that it had a lot of tropical sort of aroma and fruit flavor that was different from sort of a lot of the other beers, you know, at the time, and especially, you know, in Monterey where, where we came up to. Through the years, you know, we've been successful with Mai Tai. It's won four GABF medals at this point over the years. We're super proud of it. And Mai Tai is actually our highest volume beer to this day. Almost half of what we make is Mai Tai. And it's just kind of a desert island beer. It's dry, it's moderately bitter, it's fruity. It just kind of has everything going for it. And it's a really special beer. And it's a beer that's evolved a lot over the years. And it's kind of gone from a traditionally dry hopped beer to now beer that has a more kind of alternative dry hopping technique to sort of coax the uh, tropical fruit flavors and aromas even more. And there's a lot of other benefits to, to the ways we process Mai Tai. We make a lot of hazy IPA at Alvarado Street. We started making a beer called Contains No Juice in 2015. We started with just trying to mimic sort of New England style IPA with, with Conan yeast. And you know, that evolved into experimenting with Saccharomyces Trois yeast in 2016, 2017. And then we settled on London 3 in 2018 on. The kind of concept behind Contains No Juice is that we like to use hops that suggest certain fruit flavors without actually containing fruit. That's just part of the ideology behind that. It's a continuous effort to sort of coax those juice-like flavors out. To this day, in 2021, we're, we're making significant changes to that. And with both Mai Tai PA and Contains No Juice, we're gonna dive into those recipes today, look at how they've progressed over the years, what kind of innovative techniques we're doing today, and how we use two different enzymes to affect two different compounds in both West Coast IPA and in hazy IPA. The past couple of years, we've been exploring biotransformation. Biotransformation is a bit of a buzzword. It's, it's a bit polarizing amongst different brewers who have had different experiences. Put simply, biotransformation is the transformation made by an organism on a compound. We've tried it in all different forms of beers. We've tried it throughout fermentation, in the middle of fermentation, with different yeast strains. Kind of had mixed results with it. It wasn't until we started adding exogenous enzymes that we really saw the value of biotransformation. And it really only applied to actually one beer style, and that's West Coast IPA. It's kind of interesting that I feel like the most progressive style of beer we're making now is West Coast IPA, and that's through the use of enzymes. And the enzyme in particular that I'm talking about is called beta-glucosidase. So the theory behind biotransformation is that during fermentation, you're getting biochemical interactions between the hop oils and the yeast, and you're creating more flavor compounds, more aroma compounds. You're creating a beer that's higher concentrated in the compounds that add to flavor and aroma. And some yeasts can naturally produce enzymes which can facilitate biotransformation. However, we found in our case that when you add enzymes in conjunction with yeast, it really doesn't matter what strain of yeast you're using, that enzyme activity will create the biotransformations that you want to result in a beer that is richer in aromatic compounds and flavor compounds that we're all going for. The fruity flavors, the aroma, basically everything we want out of IPA can be accomplished through the use of enzymes. And the best way we've found in doing that is when we can combine hops that will be involved in the process from start to finish, meaning from knockout all the way to the end of fermentation. This is a technique you know, we call knockout hopping. It's, it's not new, a lot of brewers have done it. I haven't really encountered too many people that use enzymes specifically with knockout or fermenter hops. And for us, it's been a game changer, especially as it relates to Mai Tai. To learn more about enzymes and biotransformation during fermentation, click the link below.